a new day begins in the Red Sea. At Shab Rumi, off the coast of Sudan, the coral reef wakes from its nightly slumber. 200 million years have passed since the Madripoors, the coral builders, first appeared in these seas. Today, those same corals still thrive in tropical waters and play host to an extraordinary abundance of marine life. A creature only a few centimeters long, living in densely populated colonies, is responsible for the creation of gigantic masses of limestone substances that rise from the depths of the sea to the surface to form rocks and sometimes actual islands. Coral reef sustains a delicately balanced ecosystem of exceptional richness. The only habitat in the world that sustains an equivalent wealth of species is the tropical rainforest. Every year, these rocks grow a few more centimeters. In the light of the day, the coral polyps are invisible, withdrawn inside their shelters. But by night, these creatures emerge in order to trap in their tentacles the microscopic floating plankton on which they feed. sunken ship provides refuge not only for fishes but also for the coral polyps which slowly but inexorably cover it and transform it into the skeleton of a living creature. After an ocean journey of thousands and thousands of miles, a turtle approaches the coral island. Thanks to a faculty which remains inexplicable to us, she has returned to the beach where she was born and where she will now lay her eggs. In the luminous clear waters near the surface, millions of coral polyps make their contribution to the slow growth of the reef. This reef is a huge underwater mountain formed of dead organic substances, but it is coated with a teeming layer of living creatures. A patch of color may be a danger signal. In the coral sea, spectacular shapes and dazzling colors are often signs of hidden menace. But sometimes, favors are exchanged between one marine species and another, creating a relationship so close that neither could survive without the other. Not all coral polyps lend their skeletons to the process of the reef formation. A few meters below the surface, the gentle currents produced by the movement of the waves reveal a difference between the various kinds of coral. The soft corals, allowing themselves to sway in the current, are able to filter large quantities of water and capture the particles of food it holds. 
Some species of soft coral have developed a special technique of filtering water and moving even without the help of currents. The Xenid soft coral has learned a water dance whose fascination conceals a mortal danger for the tiny plankton organisms. The feather star extends its arms to increase the probability of capturing food. Its fan adorns the face of the coral mountain like a great flower. The reef is an amazing underwater world. In no other part of the ocean is the relationship between marine creatures and their habitat so perfectly developed. The great family of corals contains over 2,500 species, which, in the course of evolution, have taken on the most varied forms, from trees to fans to columns of every shape and size. The coral reef is subject to a constant assault from the waves, the wind, and the tides. But there are also fish who contribute to changing the features of the madreporic landscape. Some species destroy the coral because they feed on it, others unintentionally break off the frills and the edges of the reef by rubbing against it. Scientists estimate that the erosion caused by the various coral predators amounts to one-third of the annual growth. The turtle likes to feed on the jellyfish that float in the water, but the reef itself offers it a well-stocked larder. When it finds a piece of coral to its liking, it pauses there, treading water with its fins, in search of some tasty morsel. A shrimp, some coral polyps, and, if it's lucky, one or two small fish. The parrotfish bites off pieces of coral in order to feed on the nourishing substances it contains. Its teeth have fused together so as to form a sharp beak. The larger parrotfish are able to break off pieces of coral as big as an egg with just one bite. For many kinds of coral, light is as necessary as food. Many soft corals live in symbiosis with certain seaweeds that procure nourishment for their coral hosts. Like the plants that live on dry land, the seaweed cannot survive without sunlight. A few meters below the surface, the dazzling colors of the various corals become confused and the reef and all its inhabitants are bathed in the blue light of the sea. The scorpion fish is not fond of swimming and spends most of its time waiting for some unwary prey, deceived by its stone-like appearance, to pass within range of its jaws. The grape coral owes its name to the protective bladders that cover it, which it can reabsorb either if disturbed or during the night when the coral polyps extend their tentacles. These corals are classified as antozoi, a Greek term that signifies animal flowers. And effectively, the madreporic formations with the varying characteristics they have developed in order to adapt to their environment cover the face of the reef like an enormous garden of marine animals. Some mollusks 
related to both the squid and the oyster, slide along the bed of coralline sand. These slow-moving and harmless-looking creatures are able to pierce the oyster's valves to obtain their food. The nudibranchs owes its name to the crown of fins on its back. These are the exterior gills thanks to which the creature can breathe. The rule according to which bigger fish eat smaller fish admits certain exceptions. A cleaner ras runs no risk as it swims right under the nose of an emperor fish. The small wrasse has specialized in offering a useful service to its potential predators. These services, advertised by the designs on its skin, are so welcome that various fish queue up to be attended on. This kind of relationship offers a mutual convenience, an exchange of favors that benefits either party. One fish is relieved of its parasites and remains of food, the other obtains its daily nourishment. Those fish which are capable of satisfying a whole entourage of cleaner ras with the remains of their banquets seem to relish the presence of so many attendants as though it were a sign of social distinction. For the moray eel, the opening of its lair is its beauty parlor, a shrimp rids it of its tiny parasites. In tropical waters, one may find not only the cleaner fish, but also cleaner shrimps and cleaner crabs. These creatures advertise their presence with particular movements within their own territories that invite their clients to present themselves. The shrimp's long antennae, which are sensitive to the slightest alterations in its surroundings, confer on it the ability to identify objects without exposing itself to unnecessary danger. With its arsenal of poisonous needles, the lionfish can wander unworriedly among the banks of coral. Within the reef, the space available to the various different species is limited. Predators and prey live alongside one another. lionfish approaches the moray eel's lair and we observe the evolution of a territorial dispute. After a night of hunting, the moray eel spends most of the day peeping out of the window of its rocky home. Nature has blessed the moray with fearsome jaws that are armed with curved teeth that hold its prey implacably. The lionfish has a whole assortment of chemical weapons at its disposal. The lionfish gets closer and closer. However, the encounter between these two inhabitants of the reef seems to have no unpleasant consequences. The defensive systems of different marine species are not always put to use, and often they prefer simply to avoid combat. In the sparkling waters near the surface, the shoals of fusilier fish are like swarms of birds in an underwater sky. The pursuit of the jackfish sets the rhythms of a ballet whose dancers risk their lives with every pirouette. Fish that live together in shoals tie their survival to the laws of probability. For a little blenny, the best defense is a small hole in a coral formation. A squid tries to render itself invisible in the water, staying suspended above the coral floor. Many marine creatures choose immobility as a way of foiling their predators. The trumpet fish thanks to their narrow, elongated shape, manage to procure their food in the chinks and fissures of the coral bank. The coloring of their skins, dark on their backs and light on their underbellies, is ideal for camouflaging them in the marine environment.
nightfall brings with it great changes under the sea. Night is the moment the predators most relish and their prey most fear. And often, the distinction between the two roles is less than clear. When the sun sets, the shoals disperse. By night, the fish sleep one by one in little caves. They will assemble again only at the light of dawn. At the first light of day, a hidden signal is transmitted to all the creatures of the marine kingdom. The noise of the coral being broken up by the parrotfish travels through the water. When the tide turns, a new animation spreads among the smaller inhabitants of the reef. The shoals of Antheus swim in the more sheltered parts, beside the large fans of coral or near the banks of coral least exposed to the current. Sweet lips likes to linger around the edge of hollows in the rock where the sun's rays mingle with the shadow. The tiny glass fish wrap themselves around a tower of coral like a swarm of bees. For the dwellers of the sandy seafloor, Burrowing is the surest way of avoiding their predators. An electric ray hides itself under a blanket of sand in order to take a nap. Unlike the electric ray, the spotted reef stingray has not developed the ability to generate electric shocks, but it possesses a no less fearsome defensive weapon, a poisonous barb in its tail. The digger crab dedicates most of his existence to keeping things tidy outside his burrow busying himself in his labors with a diligence which would be hard to come by in the world above water. This crab has a partner, a little fish which stands permanent guard at the opening of the burrow. The goby's mission is to warn the crab of any approaching menace, and in the case of potential danger, both retreat inside the hole. The crab will not then come out again until his sentinel gives the all clear by returning to his observation post. The movement of the tide forces the tiny Antheas to swim counter-current, traveling only very slowly. The tentacles of the sea anemone wave like blades of grass. A curious relationship exists between the two-bar anemone fish and the anemone. Not only does the clownfish spend most of its life swimming between the welcoming arms of the actinia, which are covered with stinging cells that would completely paralyze any other fish of its size, but it also, in case of danger, goes so far as to hide itself inside the anemone's mouth. The clownfish lays its eggs close to the anemone's base and then takes care to guard them and oxygenate them with its mouth. While many marine creatures pass their whole lives within the circumscribed area, one non-infrequent visitor to the coral oasis is equally at home in the open sea around the reef. The turtle doesn't only visit the coral reef in search of food, but also sometimes to look for somewhere to rest.
the snappers gather in large shoals near the outer edges of the reef. This is their mating season, a sign that spring is near. These fish reveal an aspiration towards a social life no less complex than that which reigns in the world above water. In this assembly, following nature's plan, each individual lives out its own role within a collective destiny. The open sea offers no refuge from predators. Side by side, in perfect formation, a school of barracuda slowly patrol in the blue. Thanks to their immensely powerful tails, they are capable of catching any other fish, swimming faster even than the shark. The grey reef sharks are highly skilled in identifying their prey. When they're hungry, these animals at the apex of the food chain devote all their energy to the search for prey. For this, they have a progression of sensors available to them. When the prey is nearby, their sight suffices them. At medium distances, they depend on their sense of smell. While to identify prey at a distance, they can count on their ability to sense the tiniest vibrations through the water. The tiny coral polyps have created one of the true marvels of nature. Enchanted mountains and towers that play host to an extraordinary collection of plants and animals. Every year, Hundreds of miles of coral reef are destroyed in order to build harbors, houses, or tourist complexes. The sad calm of a dead city built with coral bricks is like an ominous warning, which seems to remind us that this sea with all its treasures is also under threat. With the fragile balance of their ecosystem, the coral rocks and islands that punctuate the tropical seas are like a metaphor for our planet itself. The Earth, too, is an island. An island thriving with every kind of animal and plant life, but at the same time vulnerable and alone in the great ocean of the universe. <laughs>